This is iOS 16 developer beta 4. And one feature that I really find interesting is the new accessibility control other devices feature that allows you to control other devices like your iPhone or iPad wirelessly using your iPhone. This is cellular. If you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button and be sure to watch through because I talk about this and a lot of other features and changes in developer beta four. So here it is right here, the update on my iPhone 13 Pro Max coming in at about 1.6 gigabytes. So if we go to settings, general and software update, you'll notice that the build number is now displayed right next to the version number. So iOS 16, and then it gives you the exact build number right there without having to do any sort of tapping. But of course you can still tap that version number to view the release notes, which is a new feature that came in iOS 16. In the books app, get some new fonts. So we'll scurry on into the font options here and you'll see several new fonts for the books app, starting with, of course, Avenir Next. So you can tap on that. You also have Canela, Proxima Nova, and Publico as well. So it's nice to have those additional fonts in the books app. Now beta four also brings back the ability to quickly change the focus mode directly from the lock screen. That's always appreciated. And the messages app gets several noteworthy changes. Uh, one of the changes is that you can no longer undo a sin after two minutes. So you could see um, that was sent about two minutes ago. So it's going to prevent me from actually undoing that send. So when I long press, you see undo sin is no longer an option here. Now I'm going to show you some of the edit updates. So I'm going to send myself that test message. If I long press, I can choose to edit that message and I'll just go ahead and do that now. But now you'll notice that the edit text is actually a button that allows you to see your edit history. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that edit button and you can see a log of all the edits that I've made. So you see the original message along with the edit and I can close it like that. Now I'm going to long press again, make another edit. So let's go ahead and do that. And if I tap edit, guess what? I get to see both edits now. So again, this will keep a log up to five different edits you can have here in iOS 16 developer beta four. So you can see I have three edits already. Let's make a couple of more and I'm gonna show you how it will limit the amount of edits you can have. So now I have four edits. You can see the history there. Let's go ahead and edit one more time. So we'll long press, select edit. Now watch what happens when I try to edit again yeah, the option to edit is no longer there. You can undo send because it's been within two minutes, but you can no longer edit because I've had five edits already. But if I undo within two minutes, it deletes the message and all the edits go with it. So on the previous beta, you got the full screen album artwork for your now playing music. But now here in beta four, you'll notice that the artwork is a lot larger, spanning almost from edge to edge. And if you tap it, of course, you can still minimize and view your wallpaper. That's actually Brandon Butch's new wallpaper. If you want to check that out, you can find the link down below in the description. Shout out to Brandon. Now, other things that you'll notice are changes to the transport controls, the nail playing controls for your lock screen. First and foremost, you'll notice that the actual album name is no longer included, which makes it a little cleaner looking. Now it just has the title of the track and the name of the artist. And you'll also notice bolder text on the playback widget as well for the artist name and the song title. And another thing you'll notice is that this scrubber is larger here in beta four. You notice how much bigger that scrubber is, especially when actually scrubbing through the song. And the animation that occurs when switching between the full screen album artwork and minimizing it is a lot faster this time around. And you'll also notice that the source indicator that shows where the music is originating from it no longer appears here in beta four where it did in beta three. That could be a bug. Uh, maybe Apple will bring that back in the next beta. Now here on the lock screen, you'll notice that the lock indicator is a little bit slower. It stays on screen just a little bit longer. Now, when it comes to setting up your new wallpaper, you'll notice under collections, the names of the actual wallpapers are no longer listed there. Previously, the widget area on the lock screen, when you went to customize, it was just a, a rounded rectangle with no text, but now it actually says add widget. So it's much more obvious that you tap that to add widgets to your lock screen. Nice change in beta four. Now you'll notice several new changes for the home screen customization interface. So if you tap done and you select customize home screen, look at this new interface. It's quite a bit different from what we had before. Now you actually have the names of the various customization options. So like original uh, color gradient photos, blur, etc. And speaking of blur, there's now that dedicated blur button in the bottom right hand corner. Previously, there was just a 
legibility blur option right there on top of the wallpaper. There's also the color and gradient options. They've been switched around, so now color comes first, gradient second. And now when you tap on one of those options, you'll notice that you get a plus button on top of the actual color. Previously, you actually had to tap a little option on the wallpaper to customize that color. But now you can see you just simply tap again on the color and there you can customize it. So it's just a little more streamlined in its layout. Now, here's something that isn't new, but it's something I just noticed and I feel kind of dumb about it. So the little circle that appears around the color, um, that indicates that's the color you chose, right? But if you select a color using the custom color picker, well, now you have a circle around the color picker icon. I didn't really understand that that's what was happening before, and I feel real stupid about that. Now, when deleting a wallpaper, of course, you now swipe up, you tap the delete button, but now you have some different text here. So it says delete this wallpaper instead of delete this lock screen. And you have some updated text above as well to correspond with that. Now, another cool feature or a fix, I should say, in beta four is the ability to have perspective zoom work at the same time with the depth effect. So you can see this image here, Sorry about the mean mug. I don't know why I don't smile in photos, but you see perspective zoom and depth effect are both enabled at the same time. So now I can move my iPhone around like that and you can see the perspective zoom work alongside that depth effect with the clock above. That, that looks really cool. Now you also have updated notification preferences for display as. So you can see the actual little icon indicators that show you what the notifications displays will look like when you select it. Previously, it was just a, a list with no visual indicator of what it would look like, but now it is much more visual here in beta four. And speaking of notifications, now when you go into the notification settings for an app, you have updated tinting here on the uh, alerts section. So previously that was sort of like a gray tint, but now it's been tinted with blue. And if you go into your focus mode settings, so I'm gonna go in and do not disturb. If you go into the filters, you're gonna notice some updated filter selectors. Now you have like radio buttons in some instances where there's multiple options. So here you see new radio buttons here within calendar. And of course, in the mail app, one of the standout features for iOS 16 is the ability to undo send. Basically, it, the mail app will delay sending a message for a number of seconds. Previously, I think it defaulted to 10 and that was it. You didn't have any option to turn it off or change that default, but now you can in beta four. Also, you'll notice here in Safari settings, if you scroll down to your advanced preferences and experimental features, you'll notice two new experimental options. The first of which is WebGL draft extensions. And then you also have a compression stream API option. Both of these new experimental features are disabled by default. Now in the news app, you have the new My Sports feature, which you can kind of customize to show you sports information for teams that you're interested in. Now in iOS 16 beta four, you can actually sync that across multiple devices. So if you go into the news preferences here, and then you'll see sync my sports. So you can toggle that on to sync across other Apple devices as well. So the home app got lots of changes in iOS 16. I showcased that in my full iOS 16 walkthrough. If you haven't seen that, be sure to check that out. But here in beta four, you have a couple of new wallpaper options for the home app. So if you go into choose existing, you'll see those two new wallpaper options, the one with the flowers right here. So that's brand new for beta four. And then there's also a more abstract option. So let's go ahead and choose from existing again. So you get this one. This is new as well for beta four. And in the copy paste menu, the search the web option is now back. So search web, search like that. And the last feature I wanna show you guys, I previewed at the beginning of this video, but if you go into accessibility settings, you'll see this right here control nearby devices. This is something actually that I have been wanting for years now. We have all these iOS devices. Why can't we use one to control another? Well, here in beta four, the first indications that that is on the way is here. So you can control nearby devices. It will automatically discover nearby devices. So here's my iPhone. And of course, these devices will need to be running the latest iOS beta. But here are some of the controls right now that you have. They're, they're fairly limited, but the the potential for such a feature is very very nice so you can see where it connects 
and then I'll show you what happens when you disconnect. So you see that message there. So now let's actually control this iPhone remotely, completely wirelessly. So I can invoke the, the uh, control center just like that and dismiss it. I can invoke notification center by tapping notifications like that. And I can easily dismiss it as well. And again, you can open up the app switcher. You can press the home button if you want to, to get back home. You can invoke Siri if you want to. So there's that Siri button. So I'll just go ahead and tap that. You can see Siri appear. And then there's the little ellipsis button that shows additional controls uh, for media control. And uh, yeah, I think Apple's gonna obviously build this out and hopefully it'll work similarly to the Apple TV remote app, but it will work for other iOS devices and maybe even the Mac, I don't know. Who knows what Apple will come up with they're pretty awesome when it comes to accessibility features like this. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 16 developer beta four. If you appreciate this video, leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with cellular.